Okay, this is your short introduction video to uh, the book Funny and Farsi by Firusa Dumas. This will uh, introduce us to an Iranian American group uh, and also a style of, of writing that is based mostly in humor and creative nonfiction to tell her story and about her experiences growing up in America. Uh, the title of the book is Funny and Farsi, a memoir uh, of growing up Iranian and American. What I want to point you to quickly before we, we get into too much more is to open up and look at the acknowledgments page where she she thanks some people, but then also the second paragraph, she explains something that's, that's kind of crucial and, and kind of sits sets an important tone for the rest of our, our look into this book. She says, Please note that in English, the preferred term for the language spoken in Iran is Persian. The word Farsi is used in the title of this book for humorous alliteration. As Farsi is a term for the language used by some Persian speakers, saying, I speak Farsi, is akin to saying, I speak Espanol. So what she's doing there is she's pointing out that that she's stretching some of the the accurate terms and and tones in the book in order to help create a, a more uh, in this case alliterative title but also sort of to help create a, a more creative way of looking at her experiences. So in the when I get into some more analysis of the book in the next video we're going to talk about that specifically the tone uh, the humor the satire the the sort of um, not really irreverent but kind of light-hearted uh, way that she deals with the the experience growing up as an Iranian uh, Muslim in the United States um, obviously experiencing that sort of culture clash and fish out of water perspective but also perhaps teaching us some things as well uh, so the book is based on these culture clashes based on immigration uh, all through this humorous chronicling but um, Dumas writes about this in a way that that shows she has uh, later in her life she has a, a great perspective on this and she, she writes about these things largely by looking at, at uh, her father and his own experiences and we'll talk next time a little bit more about about her real life father to help sort of situate why she looks at him and, and his his experiences he had been to the United States prior to her family coming over and had had a knowledge and had some some um, some previous um, run-ins and and previous good experiences, etc., that help situate his time with his family there. So that's all drawn from here as well. Um, Dumas chooses to focus on the humor of these situations, but there's obviously a lot of other emotions that come through as well including isolation and, and, and loneliness and, and, you know, simple um, bits of, of education, welcome to the American experience, that can be viewed in ways other than humorous, but she chooses to look at them in a humorous way. Um, Dumas was born in Iran. Okay, she was born... Uh, and then moved later to California when she was seven years old. It was 1971. And then she moved back to Iran after two years. And then eventually came back to the United States where she went to college. She went to Berkeley. She met her husband there. And this is where she gets the French uh, surname Dumas. Uh, and with no real previous writing experience, she began writing... Um, later in her life, mid, mid part of her life, uh, really focusing on her growing up stories, in particular the stories that were centered on her father. And 
she published in 2003. Very well received uh, book, Funny and Farsi, nominated for many awards. And then later, she published a book called Laughing Without an Accent in 2008, uh, a series of autobiographical uh, essays. Um, our subject matter has, has largely been, you know, the experiences of her own family, but also on a larger scale, uh, Iranian uh, immigrants to the United States and uh, Muslim immigrants and Muslim citizens of the United States, their own particular feelings, uh, whether they be in a, in a sort of lighthearted, humorous way or in a more serious, analytical way that that shows, you know, some things that, that, that are very heartbreaking and very uh, much misunderstanding of the current United States. So a little bit of history, and I'll give you more next week, a little bit of history about uh, Iran, where Duma uh, immigrated from. Uh, as I said, you'll note in the acknowledgments that she makes the difference between Persian and Farsi that is important for us to know. Um, Iran was once historically known as Persia, and it, you'll see in the video there that um, there's a, a, an interview video that I, I've put into your Blackboard folder. She talks about uh, coming to the United States and, and hearing a neighbor or somebody refer to a Persian cat. And she is, uh, and her family makes you know, some connection with that, in a, in, again, in a very kind of lighthearted, humorous way. Uh, but this area of, of the world is, is home to the longest continuous civilization dating back 4,000 years before uh, Christ. Um, during the 8th and 10th centuries, uh, Islamization of the area began, and in 1501, so the 16th century, beginning of the 16th century, Shia Islam is the official religion. Um, from 1501 all the way until 1979, so uh, an unprecedented, well, a, a very long period of time, Iran was ruled by a monarchy. Okay, like a king or a queen, or, but uh, they had a shah or an emperor okay, during that, that 480 year um, run. Okay? But in 1979, and you may or may not know some of this history because this is you know, relatively recent history, the Iranian Revolution begins uh, and Iran becomes an Islamic Republic. Okay? It's also sort of known as the uh, Islamic Revolution. In, you know, depending on, on where you, you hear this. Um, and it took Iran from that monarchy, you know, from the Shah, uh, to an Islamic Republic under Ayatollah Khomeini. Okay? And essentially what, what happens is that a theocratic government is instituted. And a theocratic government means a government based on religious principles and religious views values, etc. Theocracy, theology and, and democracy put together. So, um, and Ayatollah Khomeini ruled until 1989 and then there have been a series uh, of rulers since then. Uh, and because of this, because of even prior to 1979, but mostly after 1979, the United States and Iran have always had a very strained relationship. Prior to that, the Shah, the, the, the monarch of the United or, or of Iran and the United States, had a much you know, better working relationship. Um, but one of the things, and I'll talk some more about this next time, and Dumas brings this up from time to time, even in the humorous book, is the, the relationship between uh, the region's oil and the way that these uh, oil fields and, and factories, and huge uh, oil factories, have always sort of positioned that, that relationship between the West, particularly the United States, and Iran. And, and in 1979, when, when the, the revolution happens, 
the the relationship between the oil fields, uh, which were nationalized as part of this, and British and the West and the United States becomes a, a huge sort of sticking point. We might get into a little bit of that in the next video. Okay. Um, a couple of questions I want you to, to keep in mind as you're working through uh, these stories. Yes, they're funny. You're going to, to laugh at times uh, out loud even. You know, uh, there will be moments where, where you, you kind of snicker, etc. Cetera, et cetera. That's it's fun and it's going to be enjoyable to read. But the, the, the point and, and, and the, the issues of putting this here in an ethnic literature class are to understand... Um, how we we have different ways of considering ethnic experiences and cultural uh, experiences in the United States. These are Americans, who, you know, much like all of our books so far. These are Americans experiencing American life with a little bit of a different uh, perspective to it, and something that that we don't always know. And that humor, that tone, is a very viable way of looking at it, you know, just as a, uh, a more serious, dramatic tone can also do that. Uh, so a couple of questions. What does a humorous tone actually do other than make us laugh and, and create sort of a, a relation between author and reader? You know, do we learn from this? And, you know, what sort of things does she use that humor to cover? What subjects? Is it all just about in Iran, we do this. In the United States, we do this. Ha, ha, ha. It's obviously not just based simply in that culture clash. Humor, okay? Then one other thing I want you to consider, and I put, put a couple links up about this in your, in your folder as well, is uh, immigrants to the United States in particular have a long uh, history, but they also have a long history of, of cultural adaptations. Okay, and what I mean by that is there are periods in family lives of, of generations becoming uh, more and more adapted to the United States culture. Now, I'm not getting specifically into, you know, this melting pot ideology of you, you come here, we need to make you American, etc. But what I mean is, you know, what do they get used to and how do they get used to it and... and and, you know, what things are sacrificed and what things are difficult to learn, etc. And so I put up a couple of links referring to, um, she's actually a Nebraska woman, a Nebraska author and, and uh, um, professor. Uh, her name is Mary Pfeiffer, and she wrote a book called The Middle of Everywhere about refugees coming to Lincoln, Nebraska, and their experiences. Um, and her experience is what she calls a cultural broker, somebody who helps them uh, adapt to, to American customs and, and whatnot. Um, now, it's important. I want to make sure you know that, that the family, Duma and her family, in Funny and Farsi, are not refugees. Refugees and immigrants are something different. Okay, And Pfeiffer makes mention of that as well. And in fact, if you... Look at the video. She she talks about what a refugee technically means, uh, but uh, this doesn't mean the experiences, the the initial shocks of of cultural differences, etc., are not similar. So that's one reason I make the connection. And if you ever get a chance to look at her book, um, The Middle of Everywhere, it's it's very very uh, fascinating read. And if you know Lincoln at all, Lincoln is where she sets the book and the people she talks about uh, are, are all refugees who have moved to Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, so it's, it's another interesting uh, way to see, yeah, this is happening, you know, immigrants and refugees and people experiencing life like Dumas uh, are happening right, right next door to us all the time. So, okay. Good luck with your reading. I'll see you on the next video.